Hey, welcome to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. Welcome, guys. Friday. Our last yes. standard Friday. Kevin. Mm. That's, that's a, true. That's a good segue. Uh, yeah. Last episode, guys, a little recap action. Uh, we talked about some changes that are happening to our, our wee little channel. We're going down to three wee videos a day. Channel. We are little, um, but we're, yeah, we are. We're, we're scrappy. We're robust. Ooh. I, I've always liked the word dainty. We're dainty? Let me tell you why. Dainty, most people think means like just, oh, it's dainty, a dainty little person. Oh, oh, dainty little means dainty. small, but adequate. So that's what we are. We're dainty. <laughs> uh, Period. It results. <laughs> tying it back to the last episode. Uh, Such a good start. Some changes are coming coming your way. Our yeah. way too, really. Uh, three Everybody's episodes a week, way. guys. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Yeah. So get ready uh, for that. We're not going to go over all the details again. That's in the last episode. Right, but right. the Monday episode is going to stay the deck tech episode. We got mm-hmm. the community and then our deck. Uh, Wednesday is now going to be the standard episode. And then Friday is going to mm. be the filler Friday where we'll do we'll do the Kiki Weekly things yeah. like that, and we're going to tie in any of the Thursday content into that Friday episode yeah. now. So expect um, those to be maybe maybe a little bit longer, yeah, some days than others. So yep. those are our kind of our uh, our meaty days. That's the plan. Say. And again, it's just yeah. to if you watched last episode, we talked about this more at length, but it's just to bring better quality content and hopefully not bog us down too much about. Worrying about trying to get all the episode content together and things like that. We can focus it a little bit, hopefully get better quality Damn stuff. True, true. Yeah. So, um, that out of the way. Yes. As always, guys, thank you for tuning in. Listening, watching, wherever you are, YouTube, the podcast app, SoundCloud. You can check us out on Patreon, on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Kevin? All of the above. Um, yeah. yeah, go check us out everywhere. Links are in the description, uh, as well as our sponsors, things like that, which we'll talk about later. Um, but not Jimmy Jones. I also <laughs> want no. not Jimmy Jones. Um, <laughs> we don't. Uh, you said no sponsor. I raise my glass. Yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> um. Thanks for the sandwiches. I also want to briefly mention our 500 follower giveaway, which is going Ooh. on right now. Uh, we do have this fantastic cup made by our good friend Andrew, who has done a lot of work for us. He also created this sticker. Which you will also get. Not just this one. There are more. There are more, there are more there stickers are more. like this. Um, <laughs> along with that, we have two Amonkhet packs, Ooh. one Kaladesh, ah. and one Aether Revolt. All oh. being given away to one lucky person on Instagram. All you have to do is follow us, share uh, the original post, mm. and tag us in it. That's right. And that's it. Correct. Um, Good so job. get on that. Do your thing. Yeah. We want you to be a part of this. Only you can prevent you not getting a chance at this giveaway. We'll work on that. I, I tried to we'll... smoke you the bear. It didn't work. No, it I'm didn't. Sorry. Anyway, all right, guys. <laughs> um, as with any of our Friday episodes, yep. we're going to start off with our random card of the day. Uh, hopefully, we will get something good. Last time we got Shatter, which was cool. Solid. You Solid. Know, not, um, not anything super special, but it's pretty cool. No, but it, it's, it's dainty. All right. Three, all but two, one. <coughs> oh, yes. Something that no, is not I dainty. Read this one. Please do. Okay, guys. <laughs> How do you prepare for this? All right. The name of this card is Bloated Toad. Heck it's yes. from Urza's Legacy. It is two and a green for a 2 2 toad. Protection from blue, and you can cycle it for two. It's an uncommon. Yes, it is. I like it. I want one. <coughs> I don't I don't know what you say about it, but I want um, one. Uh, where to start with this guy? Okay, so <laughs> um two twos for three. Um not that good. No. Pro per- blue. That's fine. But blue isn't going to touch this card. No, it's not. Like they never they would let you have bloated toad. Also you can cycle it for 2. Yep. That's like the biggest upside about this entire card. Not the worst bad card we've gotten. A no, card of the but day. probably one of the more funny ones. This is great. It's bloated a bloated toad. toad. Heck yeah. I mean, yeah. And it is a giant toad. I mean, you see this everywhere in vintage. This is <laughs> Uh, no, this is a terrible card. <laughs> yeah, guys. it's not that good. I guess Pro Blue may have been relevant back in the day, um, and you can make a case for it to be relevant now. 
Um, <laughs> can you though? <laughs> not really. So think of it like this. Uh, sure, it's got protection from blue, but what is blue notorious for doing to creatures? Bouncing. Countering. Countering. It does not have pro I mean, blue on the stack. I I do see like. I say bouncing because things like unsummon and snap, but why would you unsummon a blue? Exactly. <laughs> it's like, it's a two You don't move. unsummon a two, dude. For <clears> a no, three. no. You Unless just... you're really in a bad way, but like, uh, this isn't going to get you. If somebody there. has won a game with Bloated Toad, I would love to hear about it. You're you're my hero. Yeah. Whoever I want to know the full story. Um, Lay it out for us in the comments. That or a that's filthy awesome. cheater. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, so Bloated Toad. If blue does anything to it, it's going to counter it, right? I mean... I mean, yeah. It has to. It just... I, it's so... It's just it's, so stupid. It's just not good. <laughs> it's just not good. Um, again, not the worst, but mm -hmm. it's probably... It, what other, Whatever happened to all the bad magic cards? Do you ever wonder? Uh, Are they just, got some in a box. Well, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> like, they're just in shoe boxes everywhere. Yeah. I mean, you have across. to think... So, like, 50 years from now, yeah. let's say... The apocalypse happened. Ouch. And people Can it be a like, hundred years from now so I'm dead? Yeah, that's I don't want to see the apocalypse. And people guys. are like, yo, Wizards is gone, but there's yeah. still some cards that survived. And we need to do something for fun because everything else is blown up. I don't know why the cards have survived, but we'll say they have. These turn into like firewood. A kindling. No, no, dude. You gotta keep morale up. You gotta play this game, man. All right. All right, moving on. So our main topic today. I'm sorry, I, I like zoned out. I was thinking about Fallout. <laughs> anyway, so today is our standard limited uh, episode. That and it is, Kev. We thought we would talk about Hour of Devastation pre-release. Uh, Surprise. Super topical. Yeah, nobody, everybody saw this um, coming. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to one tonight slash tomorrow morning. <laughs> then I'm working till four. Oh. It's going to be a packed day, um, but yeah. I am beyond excited. So. Yeah, I'm going to try and go. I'd like to go. I've never been to a pre-release, so it'll be a new experience for me. I don't think you've been either. No, right? I have not been to a pre-release. Um, um, so it'll be pretty fun. I'm yes. excited. Uh, but yeah, so we thought what we'd do is talk a little bit about the set, Hour mm -hmm. of Devastation. Um, we'll go over some of the mechanics first, and then we'll sure. go over some of the archetypes that are going to be available to you whether you're drafting or you're doing sealed events or whatever it's sealed if it's pre-release so, yeah um but if there's any subsequent drafts going on you'll maybe know what to go for sure, so sure sure um with that though i think we'll jump into the mechanics first um which i have elected to talk about um by all i don't means. know the archetypes very well <laughs> um you get me for bud yeah so all right the first well okay let's go over the mechanic that is resurging in this uh we're exerts back um no surprise yeah exerts back Got everybody it. knows what it does you can tap it it doesn't untap during the next turn if you exert it uh and you get some sort of buff or some sort of ability uh draw a card pump your guy other guys get pumped stuff like that yeah um a very solid aggressive mechanic uh as we've learned from Amonkhet. Um, although, as you were mentioning, I think this set is looking to slow the game down just a bit. Yes, so I'm questioning we'll how good Exert will be in that sense. I think if you're getting other value, maybe not just pump value, right. it might be a little more worth it. But that remains to be seen. Um, the first new mechanic that we're getting is similar to a mechanic in Amonkhet, uh, and that is Eternalize. Uh, it's similar to Embalm, but a little bit different in that you can pay the cost and it comes back as a 4-4 zombie but it keeps all the abilities of the previous cards. So it's sort of like Embalm, but with a little bit of a buff usually. Yeah. Um, you know, you're you're not just getting that creature back. So if it's a 2-2, two -two, instead you're getting a 4-4 four -four back when you actually eternalize this. Mm -hmm. So Usually with um, its... Yeah, uh, with its abilities. So it keeps everything. Right. Uh, which is fantastic, right? Like, I actually really like this. This provides, again, sort of super flashback instead of just flashback yes. for creatures, uh, which is great. Um, so I think this will prove to be a fairly uh, useful mechanic, as Embalm did, I believe, in, in Amonkhet. Things like the... Uh, uh, I can't think of the name. White 4-3? With Embalm? Mm -hmm. Vigilance? Am I right? Is From Amonkhet? Yes. Um, you know unwavering Initiate. Yes. Um, that guy, I mean, he's filler, but he's super good. Like, you use him 
Um, and there's a lot of embalmed cards that you use in Amonkhet just because very true. they're repeatable bodies, right? Like, that's what you want. Uh, especially in a limited environment, it gives you plays late game if some of these early creatures died. So Definitely. I think it's perfect. Um, really excited to see how that works out because I do think it will be fantastic. Um, but I'm not sold on it. You're not sold on it? Nah, I think... Why is that? With them trying to slow it down... <clears throat> um, it, it feels clunky to me a little bit. Uh, there are some creatures I think it works great on. Mm -hmm. The cat, the adorned pouncer, for instance. Yeah. Double strike, internalize for five. That's so great. a four forward double strike for five. That's super good. It's awesome. Yeah. And then there's other cards. I'm going to try to scroll to them. Um, as always, we're on Mythic Spoiler because it's a great place to find yeah. your card. You don't list. use Mythic Spoiler. Use Mythic yeah. Spoiler. So there's a, uh, uh, a four four for six. That's just a 4-4 four, four for 6. Yeah, and that I think you're right. That's the downside to this. But I think that was the downside with Embalm, too. There were just some creatures that you didn't care to Embalm. Um, I mean, and, that's, and I think that's, that's fair. fair say, but yeah. at the same time, if you are low on picks or you're trying to fill out a color, uh, if you're in a sealed event, for instance, sure. and you've got really good white, but you're not quite there on playables, and you've got one or two cards that aren't great, mm -hmm. I think the Embalm, or I'm sorry, the Eternalize, is sort of enough to say, well, I'll at least consider it. Well, that, I mean, that's um, true. It is two cards in one, really. Exactly, and it. that's that's sort of my takeaway, is that, like, in some cases, you'll want to just have that option open to you. Right. And um, I don't know a whole lot about what's in the set as far as enter the battlefield triggers for creatures. Like, if there creatures enter many. the battlefield, okay. Um, and there, um, there are some, but a lot of them don't have involved. Yeah, so... so not I, bomb internalize. Sorry. I think it adds an out to some of these creatures, mm -hmm. but again, you're exactly right. Some of them stats wise, it just doesn't really do. It's not good. Yeah, it's a little tricky. It's a little yeah. tricky. Um, that being <laughs> said, there are some cool things in the set. Um, okay. and I'm not 100% saying internalize is not good. Uh -huh. It just it feels clunkier. Yeah. Um, now, not this is me not having touched any hours cards, not yeah. having drafted, made any decks, whatever. So, 100% speculation on my part. But it's just an opinion, baby. <laughs> Don't look at me when you do that. <laughs> What's on, baby? Um, so let's go over some of those uh, archetypes, some of those things that you can look to to build or draft. I have draft. one more mechanic, though. Do you? Yeah. I thought you did a... You rushed. <gasps> We're skipping You missed my... the best one. My favorite one. I can't believe you've done this. <laughs> can't believe you've done this. <laughs> can't believe you've done this. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Now he's back in. <laughs> Uh, sorry, y'all. Let let's me, let's let me reel it back. Butt back in here after Please. I was so rudely interrupted. I'm um, just excited. All right, guys. The probably by far the best mechanic. I would say yes. speculating, but it's the best. Mm -hmm. um, Afflict mm -hmm. is now in Hour of Devastation. This is a really cool mechanic. So, oh yeah. Um, I'm reading it here. Whenever this creature becomes blocked, defending player loses so much life. Uh, so if it's Afflict one, they'll lose a life. If it's Afflict right. three. They lose three life. Um, and what this does for aggressive cards is make them aggressive no matter what. Oh, yeah. Like, it doesn't matter if they block. You're going to deal damage. And that's yes. exactly, especially in a limited environment, those tend to be the decks that take mm -hmm. over, right? You want to be dealing the damage quickly and just take over the game. Um, and so Afflict helps you do that tremendously. And I think this does play a little bit against your previous comment that I think it slows. It doesn't necessarily slow the format down so much. Right. That's my um, that's my thing. Is yeah. they they need to print enough that and we were I was saying before that mm. I I'm worried Afflict might be too strong. Yeah, you did um, mention that. And specifically, there's uh, a few cards um, that make me think that one is Manticore Eternal. I pulled him up here. <laughs> He's Afflict three. Uh, he is a five four for five. Uh, with a flick three, uh, Manicore Eternal attacks each combat if able. So, <clears throat> this is a card you don't care if it stays around. You're yeah. just getting in there to swing. So, either at five power, they're probably going to lose a guy. <laughs> yeah, I mean. uh, so, it's either lose a guy and take three or take five. Yeah. Hmm. It's like it puts your opponent in a position where neither option's good, right? Like, yes. even if they do block, it's... they're going to be taking damage, which is in an aggressive deck. Yeah. It doesn't really matter if your guys stick around as much. There is also Emmet Eternal. Yeah. Afflict three. Uh, this is a 5 5 for three that says whenever an <laughs> opponent casts a spell, put a minus one, minus one counter on it. 
Uh, whenever it deals combat damage to, to a player, remove all minus one, minus one counters to it. So good. Yeah. Now, so this is this doesn't synergize with its afflict, as in its uh, combat damage only counts if it gets through right. its power. Right. So it's kind of fixing. However, that turns it into a must block if yeah. you are about to kill it. Yeah. So again, you don't get much upside. No. Now, Amit is a rare, so you don't see a ton yeah, of those. Yeah, you're not going to be counting on some of these big no. bomb cards. But no, no, if no. you open them, they're absolutely directions you can take. Oh, they're um, so good. And I think Afflict is a mechanic where it's potential. Like, if you've got enough of Afflict, I think you move in on it, right? Like, you kind of... Probably. I don't... I am not a guy who would speculate yeah. seeing it because there's not just a ton of good targets. Sure. Um, However, it's kind of like a bonus. If I'm mm -hmm. if I'm drafting Rakdos, I yeah. mean I'm gonna pick up stuff with Afflict, and I can easily trim my list down to include most Afflict things. Yeah, and I right. do think Rakdos aggro is a thing, right? Yeah, like, uh, totally. There's... Let's move let's move right into it. Yeah, that's that's my first archetype. This is my just gut reaction that looks yeah. like the strongest to me. Um, however, that's been go away. That's been said about <laughs> a lot of uh, sets before that. Ooh, yeah, this aggressive one's gonna be the best. Ooh, and that's this, and. I think that's you the know. trap a lot of people fall into, uh, mm -hmm. especially with a limited environment that mm -hmm. like, okay, I have to be aggro. And while aggro tends to be a little bit better in limited, <clears> that doesn't mean you have to be aggro, um, especially in sealed where you know your card pool. If you just yeah. don't have the cards for it, you shouldn't force it. Um, I think, and we'll talk about this later, Great. there are control variants in this environment that I think could work um, in a sealed event. I, constructed we've been talking about grixis control oh, as being yeah. like amazing um yeah and I'm limited to play with that in draft no probably not um mm -hmm. but I, in a sealed yeah. potentially it's a little bit tough because you don't get the fixing the mana fixing that you'd really like um right. and that's sort of the downside with this set i think i uh, know it absolutely is there but, are there are no dual lands in this no. set which is a big thing um so that's a that's a point uh, that needs to be made is it is best you are strongest if you stick to two colors yep uh, if you try to go in three, you can. I would probably splash one maybe for a late game play. Yeah. Right? If I pull Nickel Bolas, maybe. maybe. <laughs> but, like, it, it is going to be very tough trying to go three yeah. color. Um, just because, again, you don't have a lot of fixing. You do have plenty of cycling still. That's a. That's true. It, it came back for the set and it's still relevant. And that's important to note because that mm -hmm. does help with fixing pretty regularly. Uh, it's not. It's, I, it helps in that it helps you dig for your lands. It doesn't necessarily yeah. get you your it's lands. It's not enough to count on for me to still no, play three cards. but color, it does but... give you that upside. If you sure. are looking for a late game bomb, yeah, yeah, put a few cyclers in, you can mm -hmm. get it. I mean, you are right. That, that is consideration. Um, there are many avenues open uh, to two color, very seldom for three, mm -hmm. um, but it's it going to be possible. I, yeah. I'd just be very wary of it sure. unless you have just excellent things um <laughs> that being said so rakdos aggro of course and archetype afflict being really the uh the engine sure in that combo yeah um another great one that is kind of cycling over from Amonkhet is minus one minus one counters in yeah. green black mm -hmm. um they will synergize much better with your two Amonkhet packs you'll find mm -hmm. um they're not as synergistic in this set yeah not I don't really know as from a design point why that is, but there doesn't feel to be as many good interactions. Like before you had the the big beetle that removed um, counters. Oh you know what I'm goodness. talking about? I know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, so you had that. that one. You had, uh, oh wow, Tutu, uh, she makes snakes. Hapatra? Hapatra, yeah. Uh, you had cards like Chandler Hapatra. Initiate, things like that. Yeah, All things that really played with minus one, minus one counters yeah. much better. Um, now it looks like it's more of a straight downside to some of your cards. Yeah. Uh, you don't shrink as many opponents' things. Um, again, though, they will synergize better with some Amonkhet stuff that you get to play around with. And you get two Amonkhet packs, four hours packs, so right. it's kind of bueno. Um, moving to... Let's talk about some control stuff, some control variants. Some people are going to try to play them. Yeah. Um, you Control, again, being in a smaller card pool, it takes a hit. Yeah. It kind of, it always does. It definitely does. Uh, it always does. <laughs> but the things that, yeah, the things that are easier for me to draft or to make controlling in a limited aspect, I tend to retool my thinking towards tempo. Um, yeah. Tempo, tempo, tempo. And yeah. the colors that do this best are uh, blue-green in this set. For sure. 
uh, where you get cards like Ronas Last Stand. You can throw down a 5-4 on turn 2. Yes. And they just kind of have to deal with that. Yeah. Um, there is There are a few cards that outright deal damage and you know kill things or spot removal of course <laughs> but um the big removal card in red in this set is open fire it's kind of a fixed bolt it's mm-hmm. for three you deal three damage to target creature player yeah um which is solid uh you kind of need that you always need that card in limited yeah. in whatever is deal damage to a target um other than that though this set kind of struggles up front unless it's got outright removal and there yeah. there are there are some um, but you're not going to see it as prevalently, which I kind of like. Yeah, it, I'm not opposed to that. It allows for some of these long game strategies, mm-hmm. like mid to late game strategies, to actually play out and see how they go. Um, yeah. Whereas I think removal heavy formats tend to just be like, okay, who's got the most removal? You know, who it can stick a creature for the longest definitely time? Definitely can feel like um, that. And so I actually am not opposed to that. That being said, though, I think that also makes. This is more for a draft scenario, not for the pre-release specifically, but if you do subsequent drafts, things like that, um, it makes removal sort of more of a priority. Sure. Um, you're you're going to want to pick it in a draft setting, mm-hmm. I think. Um, I value removal fairly heavily. There, yeah. So. so one card then to look out for, uh, Torment of Venom. Mm. It's a great one. Uh, for two colorless and two black, put uh, three minus one minus one counters on target creature. Its controller loses three life unless he or she sacrifices another non-land permanent or discards a guard. Yeah. Uh, so this is, in the text, another non-land permanent from that one you just shrunk. Yeah. Which is solid. Yeah. It's kind of a two for one for four. Yeah. Uh, or just three damage. Which is great. Yeah, it's that's value nice. no matter what. Yeah. So I don't even know what worst case would be. If like you shrink one thing and they take three might be the worst one because I might rather shrink one big guy yeah make them sack something i don't know see that's the thing about this card that i love yeah it gives you a lot of options and at four <coughs> it might feel like a lot but that is a card that you might almost first pick sometimes. there's an, and, and this card brings up a really good point as well as afflict i think there's a really interesting theme that they're going for mm-hmm. here which is on theme with like bolus and things like that where it's like you're giving the opponent the choice to pick something but neither one's good. <laughs> like yep. in the end, they're both terrible. Yes. It's got, and so it's like it's perfect for the nickel bolus theme. You know what I mean? Like here is this crazy awesome effect. You can negate it if you do this other crazy awesome effect. Like yeah, you know what I mean? That's it's true. just it's very cool flavor that's throughout the set, uh-huh. which I think is great. That's true. Um, so bringing it back to uh, uh, blue green for the controlling yeah. kind of tempo aspect, um, you get. Uh, cards that kind of allow you to uh, control the board they're reprinting unsummon mm-hmm. which i love yeah um what is it something hopo who is it river hopo hoopo <laughs> uh he's sweet uh he is a one three flyer for one green one blue that says uh for three colorless one green one blue you gain two life and draw a card uh so it's a man ability yeah awesome you should always by the way and sealed and just drafts and things like that any repeatable card draw effects are super high priority. They're very um, strong. And they there's are not very, a very ton good. There's in not. hours. Um, so. so absolutely pick those. I know people like to undervalue some of those cards because the creature that it's stuck to te- tends to be not that good. True. But that's not why you take it, right? Like you take it for mm-hmm. the card draw. Yeah, definitely. Um, it gives you something to do late game with that yeah. mana if your board is stalled. If you think back to our... Uh, uh, the uh quadrant, quadrant theory yeah 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 um that's a great card if you uh are stalled out right yeah it's perfect it's a mana sink mm-hmm. that you need sometimes if you just keep definitely. drawing lands why not play them and then be able to draw some more stuff you definitely know? um there are a cycle of the aftermath effects as well um one good one i struggle with my favorite one for these because i'm not crazy about the I'm not cards. crazy about Aftermath um, either. There, there were some good ones in Amonkhet. Um, re- which one is it? It's not Reduced to Rebel. That's Ravnica. It's a uh, the red card. Oh, uh, oh crap! What's the name of it? I don't know. You know the one with Mythic Spoiler? 
Oh, I'm stuck on this right now. I don't know. I can't think of I it. I forgot. It's the one that you deal so much damage, and then you can mm -hmm. double the damage you deal that turn. I cannot think of that. I right. can't either. Um, um, it's a but, great card, though. It wins you games. Yeah. Reason to believe, though, from ours is the one I like to look at. Uh, reason for one blue, scry three. Woo. You really love Ooh, this baby. card. I think it's good. I do. I think you scry might buy three it, for value one? it a little high. Uh, it's believe isn't too good. Uh, believe says, look at the top card of your library. You may put it onto the battlefield if it's a creature card. If not, put it into your hand. Not awesome. So here's my thought. I like Scry. I like Scrying. I think that's great. I love Scry. However, it's not actual card advantage. No, no, like, it's Like, you're not, not even replacing it's, the card. All it is, really, is knowledge. And knowledge is important. I'm not, I don't want to undervalue that. And but if, I you just are, mean, if you are able to play Believe, like if you get to turn six, not unheard of, unlimited. No, not at all. You can do both, and you can put out your fatty. You can put out your bomb. Yeah, not for free, but if you it's can in do the it. top three card, four cards, technically. Well, that's why you scry. It could be. Yeah, I just it could be the top four. It's it's fine, but I don't think it's as good. It's it is not awesome. I think it's a better card admit. for something where you like know you're going to be able to set up, like in a limited environment. You're really sure. like hit or miss on stuff like that, and in an environment where your deck is built around being able to do it, that's fine. Sure, like I think it would be so much better there. Yeah, um, uh, but that's just me. Not to, he's doubt. right, but I think it's gonna be. I think it'll be good. We'll Play see. with it. Tell me what you think or don't. Don't believe me. Trust Kevin. Whatever. <laughs> uh, so move you away from trust Kevin. Move away from blue green. I'm not as familiar with it. I don't love blue green like, like some of my green. other ones. Um, the Azorius blue white colors though mm. this is kind of a strong one uh it was strong in Almonkhet. it's strong now yeah uh they tend to get obviously the strongest flyers yeah no different here um so it can be kind of aggressive and tempo -y at the same mm -hmm. time which is awesome uh one huge combo to point out that i love okay it's great uh card saving grace it's an enchantment with flash says, when it enters the battlefield, all damage that would be dealt this turn to you and all permanents you control is dealt to Enchanted Creature instead. Okay. Enchanted Creature gets plus 0, plus 3. All right. That seems, I mean, sure. Okay. There's a card. <laughs> Where she go? Ketra's Avenger. You may exert a Ketra's Avenger as it attacks. When you do, prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to it this turn. Oh. So. That's pretty cool. See the line. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. Both wow, of these that's cards, great. yeah. Both of these cards are common. Um, this is a really, really cool combat trick. Yeah, that turns the tide a lot of times. Yeah, uh, especially if you have um, kind of an even-ish combat. Mm -hmm. Like even if you'd be losing more things than they would, that mm -hmm. prevents all of that. It's it is a huge tempo swing. Yeah, I love it. Again, with the unsummon, uh, blue white seems like deceptively strong. I think set. you're right. It's got weirdly a lot of tricks. I say weirdly because normally you think like combat tricks as being like mm. red or green. Um, but like combat tricks in a different sense, things like unsummon where it's more of a tempo play, things like preventing that damage, mm -hmm. you know, like being able to flash that enchantment. It, that's great stuff. Yeah. Like I really, really like that. And you're right. It's very, very heavy on the tempo stuff. It is. Um, um, there's cards that... Uh, tap opponent's creatures uh jeru's renunciation uh it's an instant for one colorless one white not great but tapping things in a combat heavy format yeah that can be the tempo swing you need well and it's also worth noting too that if you're against a deck that's running something like afflict uh you can you actually have an out to afflict whereas most decks probably won't you know what mm -hmm. i mean like they're attacking you're going to be taking damage so if you tap it down before that attack step you actually can get around you that. mitigate all um, that yep. and that's just extra value i think what that does is it pushes up the value of tap effects sure. so much more um and again with the two on cat packs you might be able to get like a fan bear or something yeah fan bear is strong and we'll, we'll it's talk be about a lot zombies better in, in a this. second yes <laughs> yes agreed um so aerial guide is another one i'll harp on uh for for blue blue white as we're talking about uh, it's just a flying uh, two two for three. It says when it attacks another target, attacking creature gains flying until end of turn. So evasion. Give a bunch of stuff flying. Yeah, flying again, strongest and limited. Oh yeah. And you know there you go. Uh, a card that I think you'll love. Oh. From this set that I also like, countervailing winds. 
So this is pretty cool. It's a counter for three, two colorless, one blue, which I know you don't love. Mm -hmm. Listen to this. Countervailing, sorry, counter target spell, <laughs> unless its controller pays one okay. for each card in your graveyard. Oh, I do like that. That's pretty sweet. I like that a lot. And hold on, it gets better. <laughs> all right. Cycle two. Oh, so, so there's not much of a downside. No, yeah, I do like not that. Not at all. Um, that's really strong. Uh, wow, that's pretty cool. Isn't it fun? Yeah. Isn't it fun? I like that. Yes. I like that a neat. lot. Uh, so you also have prowess in blue. Um, yes. In the set as well, it should be known. Uh, Spellweaver Eternal um, has prowess and afflict two in blue, which That's is so good. Again, deceptively yeah. aggressive. Uh, really strong. Um, Man, what do you yeah. do if they like swing in with open mana with that? Like, do you Spellweaver? Yeah, like, because you don't know how much damage you're gonna be taking. I mean, it's a it's a two <clears throat> one. I think I just block honestly. Yeah, I guess. Because at worst, then I'm taking two. That's fair. I right. think you would probably block. I'll probably, I might lose a creature and take two, but that's, yeah. I, I don't know. Very Dep it depends on the situation, but you could, yeah. Yeah. Kind of depends. That makes it hard to block, though. It does. Yeah, it's not fair. Uh, <laughs> so, Black White Zombies makes another yes. surge, wave, yes. what have you. Zombies. Um, All yeah. the zombies. Uh, they, I was talking to a buddy. I said, he thinks zombies is going away. I kind of tend to agree with them. I said, the only way it stays as if they force it yeah there's not enough really to say they force it but there's still some good stuff yeah um little speculation pepper it in for standard esper zombies i mm, think could be yeah. a thing for a few weeks i don't know if it's going to be tier one but it'll it, somebody's going to make it um here's the thing you still get your uh blue black guy from shadows for a while who is he stitch something maybe Gisa and Jiro? No. 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 That's Eldritch Moon, I guess. Uh, there was a deck around it for a little while. Um, something horror? Maybe? I don't know. Man, Face don't know. You're the standard guy. Forget it. Forget it. <laughs> uh, couple that with the Scare of God. Couple that with yeah. the yeah, the freaking lords, the the white black zombie uh, dread wanderer. Like, I actually think, so here's what I think. Talk to um, I think this opens up the door for a control deck where the top end is zombie based. Hmm. Now, hear me out. Okay. So something like a control deck, blue, black, or Grixis control, or something, or even Esper, I guess, would probably be the best. So Esper control um, hmm. with the zombie god as one of the top end cards Scare and Liliana, yeah. where you can okay. create a zombie and then get the, the Scarab god going off. Okay. You can honestly just do it in blue, black, I think. I if think you can, are, but I think white tiers. gives you access to like cast out and things like that. Well, it definitely um, does. And I, if you play other zombies in there, you would you need you might white, white. Sure. yeah. But like, hmm. it gives you that potential. I'm not saying that would be good, but I think you could try it. It'd be interesting. Yeah. You're I, less I'm certain. actually, I'm, I'm trying to think how it would work. And honestly, I think that might be really strong. It's, I'm thinking about it. Uh, the deck I play now, you just retool it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Take out the Gear Hulks. Take out Glory Bringers. Put in Scarab God and Liliana's. I don't. I don't hate that. Yeah. I kind of like that. Yeah. Do I like it more than Is It Control though? I do really like Is It. You're American controlled technically. I am now. Yeah, but because of Cast Out. Yeah, but Cast Out's so good. I love Cast Out. It's By so the good. way, why is Cast Out not played more? Because it's four. It's too expensive. But it's... Uh, it's good. It's, it's really standard, good. standard, though. It's okay that it's expensive. Yes. <laughs> cast, out, cast Out is great because it gives you answers to things not on the stack, mm -hmm. which I love. Um, which I struggle, and a lot of control players, I guess, would struggle with that in if it hits the board. We don't have a lot of answers because right. not a ton of our spells deal a bunch of damage right now. Yeah, like, there's really bad burn. Yeah, in the way harness, of like electricery, harness lightning is fine. There's Shock that. and magma spray are okay. Yeah, you you end up having to two for one a lot of things if you want yeah, to clear it. Yeah, exactly. Um, because a lot of big stuff hits the board right now in standard, and you can't just like blast it away. I will note also, just as a little interaction tip, um, in the way of these new gods, mm. uh, the way you get around their hand, going back to the hand, 
sort of a thing is you magma spray and then deal enough damage yes. to actually kill it mm -hmm. um you have to exile it right like that's yep. the way to do it or you can rip it from the hand but it, if it's on the field the only way to really actually get rid of it is to magma spray mm -hmm. and then still deal enough damage yeah. to get rid of it we can't really rip it from or the hand it right out. no 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 because yeah it's only when it dies so if they do discard it it just goes to great yeah it's only when it dies yeah so, so that's true you can you can rip it from hand but like if it's on the field that's the probably one of the only you know few ways yeah. to get rid of it that's unless true. you cast it out but cast out strong um, just something to note i mean exile effects are always a plus oh yeah right? yeah um that's something i think uh, is underestimated in a lot of ways like being able to exile something because in a situation like these gods for instance like you kind of have to exile it there isn't really too much else to do um in a normal yeah. like a lot of other creatures it's not that effective right like some you of the zombies it's it. effective right. because they have recursion from the graveyard so if you can exile it it's great but like generally it's not the strongest thing but to be okay. able to in a deck is important i think sure. if you've got one or two magma sprays and you're running red throw them in there i mean you're gonna run magma spray anyway but like you should it's yeah, important it's that you can actually stuff. exile something yeah. um especially in a sealed event where the gods will be prevalent so just something to think about uh yeah you'll see them i don't know about prevalent no uh, i mean they're gonna be yeah, 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 yeah. But... you're right you're right um and it is worth noting mm. that gets around uh eternalize it does and embalm to exile things um not that there'll be a ton of cast out either, only two. I'm gonna get packs again, but <laughs> even still. So go back to zombies, um, black white zombies. It's an archetype you can look for. You've got unraveling mummy being your kind of flagship, mm -hmm. uh, uncommon for that. Unraveling mummy for three, one colorless, one white, one black. It's a two three with two man abilities. Two These for are good. one. Target attacking zombie gains life link until end of turn for one colorless, one white, or one colorless, one black gains death touch until end of turn. How good is that? It's kind of a toolbox zombie guy. I love that. It's really um, good. This is one of the few cards that makes me think zombies is going to stick around a little bit. Yeah. Um, being able to give it lifelink, give something lifelink or death touch, because both of those abilities, death touch especially, is super hmm. relevant in a lot of cases. And it yeah. gets around, like, so for instance, in the zombie deck, it's very easy to get outclassed by stronger creatures. Sure. So to be able to actually swing in and then force a block mm -hmm. and then throw death touch on something is fantastic. Like, True. Because that's your way around those bigger creatures, right? Yeah. Like, or just hold back and wait. And yeah, I mean, that, that happens. Whatever you need to do, but oh. that that is that toolbox card that mm -hmm. gets you there. You know what I mean? You're right. You're right. Um, I, uh, I'm unsure if he sees much constructed play. Yeah. But... That being said, he's yeah, great. He's awesome. Um, especially for them. How much obviously. is it that he costs? His CMC? Mm -hmm. It's three. One colorless, one white, one black. I think you might see some yeah. constructive play. Um, I just, I don't know. Because you're, you're holding up mana in an aggro-ish deck. Yeah, but the thing it. about it is because zombies don't get haste, you're going to swing in before you play anything. You're going to play stuff second main. That's fair. Most of the time. So I think it's fine to do something Let's like give this. Give the option. Maybe. Maybe so. so. Prove me wrong. I'll, I'll be happy do to be it. wrong. Make it happen. <laughs> uh, Resolute Survivors <laughs> is the next card I'll talk about. Not for zombies, um, but for uh, red, white, exert, aggro-ish. Yeah. Uh, you may exert Resolute Survivors as it attacks. Whenever you exert a creature, it deals one damage to each opponent, and you gain one life. Tempo Pretty swing. Good. Yeah. Again. Um, a lot of exert stuff in red and white. Um, this set is a little different in that you don't exert a lot for extra power, which you did in yeah. Amonkhet a lot. It's like exert something, you get tokens. Exert something, and you gain which I life think for what have you. I think that plays to your point of slowing down the format of yeah. it. It's not as it's exert, but it's not in mm -hmm. the aggressive manner that Amonkhet was. It's yeah. more bonus effect style mm -hmm. stuff um but uh red white was strong in Alma cap it was fairly strong i would it, agree this card i think just kind of ties it together a little better mm -hmm. whereas you you didn't have a like a, a a flag bearer card yeah really for that archetype um i'll go through, i'm going through the gold cards because they, they kind of exemplify the effects in the set obelisk spider the next one we'll talk about one colorless a black and a green with reach and says whenever it deals combat damage to a player put a minus one minus one on <coughs> that creature 
Whenever you put one or more minus one minus one counters on a creature, each opponent loses one life, you gain one life. That's awesome. Yes, but that is the only big thing you get for minus one minus one counters, which is why I'm yeah, saying it's not fair. it's okay. not as good of a But that's very that is a strong ability. Can be if the set one, had the cards to put it see, to use, I guess. One life it's not like super good, you know? Well, okay, you say that. Pings are, it's a bonus, but it's not. But it's not just a ping, you're also gaining a life, and I know that seems irrelevant. No, no, but, yeah, you're gaining a life, but like, you're shrinking a creature and you're paying. Think about extort. How good was extort in limited? All right. I've like, played a lot of extort. You know what I mean? Like, it was actually really good. And I know extort is probably better than this it's mechanic. It's so much but better, like, though. But it's the same effect, right? Like, it's... Mm. It's contingent on a lot more, though. This has to deal combat It damage. is, yeah, yeah. But is it to a... It's... Okay, to a creature, It's still yeah. a pretty strong ability, though. It's not ignorable. Yeah. I'll say that. Um, I don't feel bad playing with this, especially because it's only for three. Its yeah. body's round enough that the stats feel good yeah. at three, mm-hmm. and that effect is nice. Um, especially with reach. <laughs> uh, yeah. There's a bunch of stuff with flying that's kind of aggressive. Mm-hmm. It's nice. Abilities okay. This this set has got a lot of good chase cards for me. Yeah, it, I think it's gonna feel weird drafting it. I think so too. Like it's actually. it's so hard for me to tamp down specific strategies. It just feels it feels like they printed a lot of very strong cards, but <laughs> less synergy. Yeah, um, does that make sense? Yeah, a lot of people are kind of saying the same thing, okay. right? Uh, Wedge well, just put out some videos. I feel good about that. There's a few <laughs> other places. Yeah, like. I don't know. It it would be fun. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. I am too. I'm looking for a good change from Amonkhet because as fun as Amonkhet was... Dig a little stale. Got a little stale. Yes. Um, the last one I'll talk about. Fur Blue Red. This isn't an archetype that's very strong in draft. <laughs> yeah. Um, or limited, really. Uh, can be, but I think it suffers from here, kind of. Yeah. Um. Bloodwater Entity is your kind of flag bearer guy. Uh, for three, again, one colorless, blue, and red. It's got flying and prowess. It is a 2 2, mm-hmm. which is not, like, that's not, that's not bad at all. That's good. Uh, 2 2 for three with flying, even, is. Yeah. That's really good. Um, its text says whenever Bloodwater Entity enters the battlefield, you may put target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard on top of your library. Well, so that's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, worse Snapcaster, but. <laughs> yeah, a lot worse. But. I mean, in limited, it's good. Exactly. It's, I, I like that prowess is a thing, but I agree mm-hmm. it's not the strongest thing in the world. No, um, especially because you don't get many of those good, like, cheap spells that make prowess really go off. Yeah, and, like, uh, in addition, limited traditionally is more of a creature-based format, mm-hmm. um, whereas if you're drafting prowess, you kind of only have to have a few prowess guys and like really good prowess guys and then a lot of incense and sorceries and cheap and ones I just, that. and cheap ones too because you want to be able to to double up on some mm-hmm. of them and it just doesn't feel strong and no. and limited um that being said and constructed i think you can build around stuff with prowess not specifically this but um you can do some cool stuff yeah i that's prowess is just kind of yeah i love prowess in like, I like the other ability sets. yeah like monastery swift sets. spear get it exactly it's a great yes. card like <laughs> monastery mentor even better <laughs> yeah it's an <laughs> exceptional card we talked about that in the deck tech episode shameless um, plug go watch it <laughs> it's great though uh okay here we go so i'm searching for cards to talk about this next point uh they have added a weird land interaction in this set uh, so there's a desert cycle yeah i don't know how i feel about these i'm not crazy about it it feels like they really forced out the deserts it's like flavor over quality of card i it would be in agreement it feels really Yu-Gi-Oh to me and i don't know why yeah well we're, we are in egypt maybe that's it egypt, uh yeah. so solitary camel is what i'll talk about just for an example solitary <laughs> camel has lifelink as long as you control a desert or there's a desert card in your graveyard it's a three two um the fact that it can be in your graveyard <laughs> I like that. They do all have, well, not all of them, but most of them have cycling. So Yeah, and I like that. That's fine. But, again, you're right. It feels very Yu-Gi-Oh-ish. I don't know why, We're better than that, does. people. So, uh, in blue, <laughs> Unquenchable Thirst, when it enters the ba- uh, 
What? Oh yeah, when it enters the battlefield, if you control a desert or there is a desert in your graveyard, tap enchanted creature doesn't untap during your controller's untap step. So yeah. that's your classic like freezing effect in blue. Yeah, tap down. Wretched camel. If it dies, if you control a desert or there's one in your graveyard, target player discards a card. Like, yeah, you it's, see what I'm saying? I mean, here's the thing: in a limited environment, I actually don't think it's that bad. It's not. It um, feels awkward though to me yeah it feels a little awkward um there are like rare deserts that might be fun to play with okay that are kind of interesting so endless sands add one colorless to your mana pool or pay two and tap exile target creature you control pay four and tap sacrifice endless sands return each creature card exiled with endless sands to the battlefield under its owner's control so it's like pseudo protection so it is yeah it's what you would do is like you swing in an attack. If they do something to kill your guy, you then exile. Most of the time, I right? Think so. Like I unless think you have a really good ETB, but there's not much. So yeah, yeah. It's not. Yes, I think that's usually. the plan. Um, but again, you're paying four mana and then sacrificing a land. Yeah, and <sighs> sacrificing lands feels bad. Although usually, that being said, in limited, you do tend to go late as far as turns go. You do want to do something, and so with you those. can yeah. get some some flooding mm-hmm. going on. So scavenger grounds, uh, tap to add colorless, and then pay two, tap it, sacrifice a desert, exile all cards from all graveyards. It's not bad. Good against graveyard interaction. Yep. Hostile desert, colorless, or pay two, exile a land card from your graveyard, hostile desert becomes a 3-4 elemental creature until end of turn. Still a land. Um, Eh. okay, but like you have to have a land in your graveyard to make that a thing exactly like i mean again you if you're cycling stuff, deserts so yeah. that's fine and if I you're guess, stacking deserts then i just eh. yeah I, i'm the same way there is one multicolor <clears throat> land in the set that i missed i apologize oh what is it crypt of the eternals it's grixis oh, duh so <laughs> yeah course. so when crypt of the enter blah, 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 when crypt of the eternals enters the battlefield you gain a life tap for colorless or pay one tap to add uh blue black the or red yeah one nah. of, not one of each just just one yeah i mean so it's, it's good if you're in grixis uh, <laughs> it's, okay, it's okay if you're in grixis is there like a shimmering grotto or anything like that nope nothing that you could channel into colored mana land wise nope huh yeah that seems bad the lands feel funny in this set yeah i just and you get they push the desert thing a yeah, lot you get spell lands now which i don't love yeah I'm excited to pre-release, and I'm excited about some of these cards. I just want to see something really quick. You want to see those? Is that the same art? No, it's okay, different. Okay, I was gonna say, ooh, it's totally. I'm new s- full arts look good. Dude, this swamp looks ominous. Doesn't it? That would be the word I would use to describe it. Uh, yes. So, <laughs> final summation: this set, uh, there are some awesome cards that I'm really excited to get. Yeah. Playing the set, a little speculative. Yeah. yeah, I'm reserving my judgment. Um, I mean, I hope it's good. I just like the synergy doesn't feel like it's there. It does unless you're drafting deserts or Grixis. <laughs> like it doesn't feel as good as Amaket, as polished. No. I'll say Amaket didn't have as strong cards, but no. it was really fun to play with. Would well, you? Would you disagree? No, I think I would agree. And I think to that point too. After a few weeks of drafting Amaket or a few drafts, uh, however long that takes. Um, <laughs> You, you sort of get into the swing of things and you're like, okay, I know I need to take this because it synergizes with this mm-hmm. or it's just, okay, I know I need to move into this archetype because it's embalm or something. You know, like it was very clear, I thought, after you've part, drafted yeah. a few times, you start to realize, okay, this is good, this isn't, I know what to take here. This, I feel like you're going to be trying stuff a lot more, which I don't think is a bad thing, but I don't know that there's going to be so much that like rises to the top as amazing. Does that make sense? It does. I think the games are going to be a lot grindier. Yes. Um, uh, I will say, uh, I think that's most drafting, though, is you you spend some time in the set and you just kind of learn what works. It what is, doesn't. but I just mean, I think for a longer period of time, this is going to be a, like, I don't really know what to do thing. You know what I mean? It could, yeah, it could be. It um, could be. Like, I think there will be times where you open a pack and you're like, uh, I don't know what I take here. You yeah. know what I mean? Or yeah. like, what's good with the rest of my deck? Nothing. I'll just pick a value card. I think there's a lot of value cards, so I think that kind of works. True. But I yeah. think 
you're gonna be just picking on value Could a be. lot <laughs> um you will be able to focus a lot more of these at pre-release because yeah. again you get six packs to use and yeah. just yours um but that that still doesn't get me excited no. is the thing. uh i really want new magic cards but like <laughs> at what cost <laughs> all right kevin is there anything else you want to say no, I'm excited though. I think I'm, I'm looking, looking forward to to trying yeah. out this set. And like you said, Likewise. there are a lot of good chase cards in this set uh, that I just want. Yeah. Um, yes. So yeah, that's a thing. Um, this, I'm more excited just to get some of these cards than I am to necessarily play just the set as a whole. Yes. This feels like a set for commander players printed in standard. Yeah. Honestly, right? a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> um, like. <laughs> oh, I didn't talk about uh, your mill card. Um, but I want to mention, I think that will be stronger than some people think. Don't count think it out. So too. You're playing with 40 cards. <laughs> if you get any of the mill effects from Amon Cat, yeah. and there's a few in ours, look out for those. Like, you're playing with 20 less cards yeah. that could be relevant. What's the name of that card? Um, it's a blue enchantment, two and a blue. Uh, at the end of turn, target opponent mills however much they've already milled that turn. Well, I'll tell you. Fraying sanity. Bingo. Got it right as you pulled it up. Frank um, Sanity. Yeah. And also, sanity. in case you haven't put this together, if outside of standard, uh, you can Frank Sanity into Traumatize <laughs> and just win. win. Um, they mill half their deck with Traumatize, and then they mill the other half with, with Frank Sanity. So, so good. Pretty awesome, I think. Um, so, we do oh. have our Crack-A-Pack, as always. Uh, this is, again, sponsored by Grand Slam, which we really appreciate all they've done Heck for us. yes. Um, they've helped us out a lot. Uh, go check them out. Their links are in the description below. Uh, Clamp owns the place at the moment, and he's doing a fantastic job. So Clamp's a go great check guy. them out. We yeah, yeah. have really, really uh, appreciated their help. So, yeah. Dude, I got a pretty solid pack, but I'm missing my gold card, Combat Celebrant. Still. I got Pyramid of the Pantheon, which is not a great card. No, it's a terrible card. <laughs> yeah. It's probably Mine's good for command.